with me truthfully every morning that you open your eyes and you see another day. That is a blessing that some people can't get to. So many people here is going to be alive. It's good to see everybody here today. Turn to somebody and say, you look absolutely fabulous. You look absolutely fabulous. All right, I have a handout this morning that I want to use. I don't know how many people are here today. If somebody will come and distribute these, if you're a couple, if you don't mind sharing, if you run out, we may have enough for everybody. Yeah. But you're going to use these later on in the sermon, so just hang on to them for a while. How many people were here last week? Last week, I started a new sermon series called What to Do When. Life is like a roller coaster. Amen? Every day is a different day. We have ups and downs. We have mountains and we have valleys. We go through things we never dreamed we'd go through. And we survive with God's help. We go through a lot of different phases in life, a lot of different changes, ups and downs. And sometimes the truth is we go through situations and times in our lives when we just don't know what to do. Anybody ever had that panic attack? Uh, I'm here, I never thought I'd deal with something like this, I just don't know what to do. So I thought it would be good to start a series on what to do when and give you different scenarios. Last week, the title of my sermon was What to Do When You Are Confused. Everybody is confused sometimes, some people more than others, but we all go through times where we get confused. We have decisions to make and we don't know which way to turn. We face things that are unexpected. Sometimes life throws us a curveball, and we get confused. We don't know what to do. And if you missed last week's sermon and you think, man, I'm going through a time right now in my life where I feel really confused and I don't know what to do, have no fear. YouTube is here. We have a YouTube page, and if you missed last week's sermon, you can always go on there and catch up. I want everybody to say that we'll go straight to the scripture. Everybody turn to the book of Psalms. Go to chapter 42. If you don't have a Bible, we have all kinds of land around here, so if you see somebody who doesn't have a Bible, make sure everybody has a Bible this morning. Psalms chapter 42 and verse 5. And in this scripture we find David talking to himself. Even back in the days of the Bible, people talked to themselves. Anybody here ever talk to yourself? We all do sometimes. David is talking to himself, and I'm going to read two different versions this morning. I'm going to read the NIV version, and then I'm going to read the message. Psalms 42, 5. Why, my soul, are you downcast? Why so disturbed within me? Put your hope in God, for I will yet praise Him, my Savior and my God. And now I'm going to read another message. Why are you down in the dumps, dear soul? Why are you crying in the blues? Fix my eyes on God. Soon I'll be praising again. He puts a smile on my face. He's my God. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I pray your blessings upon the word this morning. Lord, help us all to stay awake. Sometimes the mornings are a little bit rough for people who are not morning people like me. Please help me stay awake, Lord, so I can preach the sermon today. Help everybody here have an open heart and an open mind so that we, we can receive from you and take what you've given us this morning and become closer to you and become more of a light for others to see. Anoint my eyes, my mind, my lips, my voice, and my heart and let me be obedient. Let me please you in everything I say and everything I do. Let me speak when you say speak and let me be still when you say be still. And God, I also pray for the congregation this morning that you will anoint their eyes and anoint their heart and their mind so that they can be open and receptive. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You can be seated. Here David is talking to himself and basically what he is asking himself is why are you so down in the nuts? Anybody here ever been down in the nuts? We've all had those days when we just feel kind of blah. Everybody say blah. Blah. The title of my sermon today, and I, I wanted to pick a title that would stick out when you guys can remember. I think everybody can remember this one. What to do when you feel like poo. <laughs> what to do when you feel like poo. Everybody here has felt like poo before. Not winning the poo. <laughs> That's a cute kind of poo. We all feel like poo sometimes. 
Amen? We go through those times. We wake up in the morning. We don't even feel like getting out of the bed. And if we muster up enough energy to get out of the bed, we don't want to brush our teeth. We don't want to brush our hair. We don't want to take our PJs off. And the truth of the matter is, sometimes we have those days where we pray that nobody surprisingly shows up to see us. Because on those days when we feel like poo, we will turn the TV off and lock the door and pretend that we're not home. Amen. I know I'm not the only one who's ever done that. Sometimes we feel like poo. Maybe it's a rainy day. Maybe you're tired. Maybe something hurts. You have a headache or a backache. Sometimes, to be honest with you, we have those times when we feel like poo and we really don't know why. I've had those days before. I wake up, I feel like poo. I can't explain it. Nothing's wrong. Nothing hurts. Sunshine outside, nothing major in my life going on. But I just don't feel like myself. I feel kind of blah. I don't have any motivation. I just feel like poo. Those are the kinds of days when, you know that I'm saying, when life gives you lemons, make lemonade. But when you feel like poo, you do not feel like making lemonade. Or we've heard people say, it's okay if it's a rainy day, just dance in the rain. But when you feel like poo, you don't want to dance in the rain. Amen? But here's where we have to be careful. If we are not careful on those days when we feel like poo, we can become what I call hee-haw Christians. Now some of you young people probably are like, what in the world is hee-haw? When I was growing up, I watched hee-haw, and everybody knows the famous, the Christian song, Gloom, Despair, and Agony on Me. If you don't snap out of feeling like poo, you are going to be a depressed, defeated, child of God. And I don't believe God wants us to be depressed or defeated by any means. Amen? I want to give you four tips today. Four things. What you can do when you feel like poo. When I knew I was going to preach this song today, I was like, well, maybe an interesting congregation that comes to the doors in the morning. Everybody here I think has probably struggled at some point this week feeling like poo. Some of you probably woke up this morning and felt like poo. So here are four tips what to do when you feel like poo. Number one, eat your peas. Somebody's like, that's crazy. Eat your peas. When we were growing up, there were certain foods that were healthy foods that we knew would help us grow and that would make us strong. Some people call those healthy foods, I call those yucky foods. Because if it's healthy, then it doesn't taste good. We knew, we were told, my mom tried and tried all those years to make me eat green stuff. I didn't like it then, and I don't like it now. But to be honest with you, I needed it. Because it made my body healthy. In the same way, there are things that you need that will help you not to feel like poo that you may not always be true. You may not feel like it, you may not want to, but there are things that we have the ability to do for ourselves. Sometimes we can help ourselves. Amen? Not too many amens on that one. I, we were listening to something we were making candy last night. We were listening to something on the radio and they were talking about this generation. They want everything done for them. They don't want to do anything for themselves. And it's so true even spiritually. We want every we want to be stood with. We want everybody to take care of our needs. But God has given us the ability to do some things to help ourselves. First Samuel 36. David was greatly distressed for the men spoke of stoning them because the souls of them all were bitterly grieved enough for sons and daughters. Now listen to this. But David encouraged and strengthened himself in the Lord his God. David encouraged himself. David didn't call up his best friend. David 
David didn't do like I used to do. I'll, I'll confess this morning. I used to be so immature, and I struggled with helping myself. He didn't turn on the TV and say, you know what, I'm going to watch Joyce Myers, and I know today she's going to have something to help me. Or I'm just going to open my Bible, and wherever the scripture is, that's what I'm going to need today. And then we would get frustrated because we would think, that doesn't apply to my life today, but why aren't you helping me? David didn't get on Facebook and chat with all his friends trying to find advice for what he needed. Amen. The Bible says that David encouraged himself. I am all for getting help from other sources. I am all for God helping you through the Word of God. I am all for God giving you people in your life that give you advice and direction. I am all for going to a therapist if that's what you need. We've all been there, done that. Most of us have. Praise God for good, godly therapists out there who can help us. But sometimes God gets us to a place where He wants us to learn that we don't always have to have somebody else. We can encourage ourselves in the world. You don't always have to have your pastor. I try to be available to you 24 7 as often as I can. But some people just sit down and give up when they can't get in touch with the pastor, when they can't get in touch with their friend. Maybe God's trying to teach you it's time to encourage yourself. When you feel like poo, you need to eat your peas. You need to do some things you may not enjoy. First of all, maybe you need to just get out of the house and get with some friends. If you're sitting home alone and depressed all the time, no wonder you feel like poo. And let me just add this. Be careful the kind of friends that you hang out with. Because there are some friends that we hang out with sometimes that make us feel like poo. Amen. Amen. Get out of the house. Some of you just need to get out of the bed. Amen. Amen. People get depressed, and what do they do? They want to sleep. Now, I'm all for sleep. I like sleep, too. But, you know, when you've done sleep five days straight, there's a problem. When all you want to do is sleep, that's a sign of severe depression. And that is not God's will for your life. You can also take a walk and get exercise, and God knows I sure need that myself. Amen? And here's a big one. If you feel like poo, maybe you need to go to church. Amen? It never ceases to amaze me the people who say, I was going to go to church, but I just didn't feel good. I was just depressed. Duh. That's what church is for. Or people who say, well, when I get my life straightened out, I'll be there. Because right now I'm a mess. The only way to get your life straightened out is to see God and do it with God's people. And what are you doing spiritually in that? Keep a journal. Anybody who like to write? I like to write. You would be surprised at the healing that God can do in your life if you just sit down sometimes with a pen and a piece of paper and write your thoughts down. And sometimes what God wants us to do to be healed from poo is to just have fun. Just because you're a Christian doesn't mean you can't have fun. Everybody smile. Oh, Lord, some of you get me from getting halfway there. Smile. You're alive, amen. You're not in jail. You're not in the hospital. You're not six feet under. You got something to be happy about. The second tip when you feel like to be authentic. Sometimes what happens when we feel like to, we stuff our feelings. We push all of our emotions and all of our feelings inside. You heard the saying, fake it till you make it. Sometimes we got too much pride. We don't want anybody to know that we're going through something. Sometimes we are afraid to let our feelings show because we are afraid that nobody will understand. Anybody ever been in one of those situations where you was going through something and you thought, somebody's going to think I'm crazy. If I even mention this, they're going to think I've lost my mind. 
You are not alone. I guarantee you that there is nothing, and especially God, there is nothing that you can feel or think or go through that God doesn't already know about. He's not surprised by anything that we go through. Maybe you are afraid of rejection, especially if you've tried to share something with someone before and they've rejected you. And I know there's a lot of people here this morning who have been rejected before. It's a tough place to be in. Maybe you were taught early in life not to show your emotions. Some people were taught when they were very young. I'd say there's a lot of guys in the sanctuary this morning who were taught, boys don't cry. Be tough. Be a man. And a lot of girls who said, you need to be stronger than that. Sometimes we were taught at an early age not to show our emotions. But let me let you in on a little secret. Sometimes if you're not careful, you can stuff your feelings, you can suppress your emotions, and that in itself is what has led you to feel like poo in the first place. Amen. Because bottom up emotions are not good. Eventually you're going to explode somewhere on somebody in the wrong way and probably on the wrong person. Amen. God wants you to express yourself. He wants you to be real. You don't have to put on a mask of God. You just have to be real with Him. If you wake up, and I believe that God even understands the term, term poo. I believe if you wake up one morning and say, God, I feel like poo. He's like, I'm here. I'm here. I know that's how you feel, and I'm going to help you. Some of you need to get some things out, and you need somebody to talk to. And I'm going to tell you right now, the very first person I'm going to recommend for you to talk to about your feelings and your thoughts, your fears, your struggles, is God. If you've never talked about crying, people say, I'll talk about how do I talk to God? You talk to God just like you would talk to your very best friend. It doesn't have to be pretty. It doesn't have to be eloquent. It doesn't have to be proper grammar. You can even say ain't. God understands Western West Virginia slang. Amen. You just be real with God. Tell God how you feel. And if you need to, find somebody safe to talk to. Don't forget I said safe. Be careful who you talk to because even people with a smile on their face are not always your friend. Be careful who you talk to. And I'm not talking about finding somebody that you can sit down and tell off. I'm not talking about finding somebody that you can just vent and complain to and be critical of everything. Somebody that you can sit down and share your thoughts and your feelings with. It is okay to admit it that we struggle sometimes. There's not a person in here who can be on cloud nine all the time. There's not a person in here who doesn't ever get discouraged. There's not a person in here who doesn't ever feel like food. Every one of us do. Just be real and authentic because it's okay. Everybody say it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Number three, the third tip, when you feel like poo, Make a plan. Part of the problem that we get into when we feel like poo is we get into a rut of whatever. How many have ever said that? Whatever. You get to that place to where you have an attitude to where you just really don't care anymore. You have the kind of attitude, well, wherever life takes me, oh well, whatever. I might be overweight and have high blood pressure, and I know I need to stop eating all the junk food and drinking all the soda pop, whatever. I might be jumping into a relationship that God sure didn't put me in, but whatever. I know I'm drifting from God. I know I need to start praying more and reading the Bible more. I just can't get there, whatever. we got to be careful with that kind of attitude. Because that's what makes us feel like poo. Sometimes there are things beyond your control. There are things.
things that will happen in your life that you have no control over whatsoever. But just because we face things that we cannot control doesn't mean that we have to sit down, give up, and have an I don't care attitude. We still have choice. We can still choose how we handle those situations. It reminds me of the serenity prayer. Everybody here has probably heard the serenity prayer. God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change. Courage to change the things I can. And the wisdom to know the difference. There are some things going on in your life right now that you cannot change. There are some people in your life right now that you cannot change. However, there are some things in your life that you can do something about. Maybe a plan gives us something to look forward to. Some of you don't have one single thing to look forward to. If you were honest about it. You have no ambition whatsoever. You need to make plans. Even if they're long-term plans. Ask yourself this morning, what do you want to be doing in five years? And if you're thinking, whatever. What do you want to be doing in five years? What kind of person do you want to become? I don't know about you, but not that I'm a horrible person, but I want to strive to be a better person. I don't want to stay the way that I am. God needs to work on. Amen. Amen. I have some goals. How can you make a difference? See, we get so caught up in ourselves. It's all about me. It's all about me. Is it really going to matter what you do for yourself in the moment? Don't you want to make a difference? Don't you want to see some change?
Well, I woke up and it was just rainy and dreary, and I just feel like a walk. Well, I got on the scales this morning, and it just stole my door. I've felt like poop ever since. You know, every time I get around so and so, they just make me feel like a poop. You need to look within. Because those things and those people are only triggers to what's really going on inside of you. A few years ago, there was somebody that I was around on a regular basis who kept irritating me. Every time I would get around this individual, he would just irritate me. He could walk up to me and say, Good morning, Pastor Sherry. And that would irritate me. And for the longest time, I kept praying, Lord, do you need to just do something with this man? And then it hit me one day. It wasn't the man who had the problem. It was me. There was something about this man that triggered something inside of me. So I began to pray, and to make a long story short, I began to pay more attention. He had the same personality as my ex. Wasn't the same person now, but there was things about him that were much like my ex. So every time I got around him, it triggered that. And God had to help me see, you need to be careful that you don't blame how you feel on people around you. For the things that are going on, those are all just triggers. God wants you to look deeper and see what is it? Why do I feel this way? What's going on inside of me? Above all, think about what God is thinking. What does God think about you? What does God think about your situation? If you haven't heard this before, let me tell you this right here. God wants to be your everything. God wants to be a mother to those of you who have been abandoned by your mothers. God wants to be a father to those of you who were rejected by your father. God wants to be your healer. He wants to be your refuge. He wants to be your comfort and your peace and your joy. There is not anything going on inside of you that God cannot tell change. Not anything. Anything in your life, any emotion, any problem, any situation, you can take it straight to God and I promise if you give it to Him, He's going to take care of it. We used to sing a song when I was little, give them all. Give them all to Jesus. Shattered dreams and wounded hearts and broken toys. And He will turn your sorrow into joy. God wants to be your everything. And we need to look to his word to see what he thinks about us and what he thinks about your situation. That's why I'm giving you these handouts this morning. I want you guys to go through this with me as I come to a close. Sometimes I read scriptures to you and I can tell some of you are looking at the fly on the wall or the room in your clothes or thinking about dinner or whatever. Because when you begin to look at the Word of God and see how He sees you and He sees your life, He can really take you out of that poo that you're feeling. I want to let you up with some words straight from God's Word. And we're going to start with Psalms 139 14. You guys read with me. 139 14. And I praise you. I don't hear you guys now. And I praise you because of the wonderful way you created me. Everything you do is marvelous. Of this, I have no doubt. Everybody say, I am created by God. I am created by God. And what did our scripture say? Everything he does is what? Marvelous. Everybody say, I am marvelous. I am marvelous. Say it again, I am marvelous. I am marvelous. Some of you have felt too marvelous, haven't you? 
Some of you have been told you've been everything but marvelous. You've listened to what people have said about you. You've listened to what so-called Christians have told you you are. Even some of your so-called friends. The Word of God says you are marvelous. I am marvelous. I am not fat. I am not ugly. I am not a nobody. I am not a mistake. I am not a failure. I am not defeated. I am marvelous. It's done. You don't have to. 
approval of the people we are about to be happy. Amen. If you have a relationship with Jesus Christ and you truly know who He is and who you are in Him, then that's all you need. Thank you. 